Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and we are at the live at the uh, at Cave Annual Technical Conference and Vendor Expo. And I just met a new friend uh, in a different aspect of the industry and is certainly a viable uh, career uh, that is available uh, to us. With us is Miss Sheila Lay. Lull. Lull. Okay. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing well. That's great. Uh, Sheila, you work for Blue Conduit. I do. Okay. So tell us a little bit about uh, Blue Conduit and uh, how you got involved in the water industry. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Blue Conduit is an analytics company. So it's a company that is tech first, but um, we are very focused and born out of actually the lead water, cr- uh, the lead uh, con- water crisis in Flint. And we work on identifying lead service lines throughout the country. Ah. So we use machine learning and we use algorithms and data science to find where the lead service lines are located uh-huh. and help reduce the uncertainty by a significant margin to ensure that utilities and municipalities um, and even state governments are able to effectively, accurately, and cost, I mean, most importantly, cost effectively, right. get the lead out. Get the lead out. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, how did how did you get involved? I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, this is a, a with the lead and copper rule, yeah. and all that kind of stuff is, is definitely is is that a kind of a, a a direction that your company took on? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So Realizing the need. Yeah. So because uh, Blue Conduit came out of the Flint water crisis, um, the co-founders were both professors at the University of Michigan, and they came into the complete uh, chaos and were like, "Hey, you're using the funds." really wildly like you're not f- actually figuring out where the lead is okay. and you're throwing good money after bad let's figure out let's like sit down and figure out how we can find those lead pipes ah. and they designed an algorithm okay and um with uh with the input of jerry webb who's our chief data scientist and we're able to go from um a, a program that was had no idea where the lead pipes out were kn- knew didn't know how much money to ask for to a program that could identify with an over 80 percent hit rate where the lead pipes were located okay. over time, not just like for the first 500 pipes. Okay. Um, and dropped the replacement cost to $6,000 per pipe, uh-huh. which without the technology, um, a different engineering firm came in and they saw that it uh, the hit rate plummeted to 20% and the cost for each successful lead replacement was 23000 Wow. So um, so this uh, the technology has been around for five years. We've used it in 50 different municipalities across the country. The company itself came into existence in 2019. Um, I joined two months ago, so okay. I'm very new to water. Ah, okay. But I was familiar with the technology from graduate school. I went to the University of Michigan for my MBA, where I knew one of the founders. Okay. And worked on a design thinking project. So ah. all of this to say, I come from a policy, a community development background, and uh, was working in a corporate job before being recruited. And it doesn't matter where you come from, okay. water will accept you. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good to know. Now, you know, graduating high school and getting on to college, did, did you have any career direction that you had earmarked? Or no. how, how did you? I love that question. Yeah, I ha- I still do not know what I want to do for a career. Me too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I, I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll, um, I, I was just really interested in continuously learning. Okay. Which is not something you have to go to college for. I think that's something that um, all people are capable of doing as long as you ha- maintain curiosity and you um, are trying to expose yourself to different ideas and industries and um, ways of working, you're going to be successful Okay. no matter what type of field you go into. Oh. So, yes, I... Uh, great I, advice. Yeah. I was able... Thank you. I was able to go to undergrad and graduate school, um, but a lot of that was, again, curiosity and trying to figure out what made sense for me and my... Um, my career trajectory. Wow, wow. Well, you know, I, I, I launched this podcast a little over a month ago, okay, and I teach this uh, Water and People class, uh, which is basically a high school class that mm-hmm. um, exposes um, high school seniors uh, to, to the water industry. And yeah. as, as you know, the water industry, as many other industries, are uh, exacerbated by uh, a deluge of retirements. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. And uh, there's going to be a lot of people that, that are going to be leaving the field. So yeah. uh, no pun intended, we have to refill the pipeline, <laughs> you know, a, a, as far as that yeah. goes. And I, and I like the fact that, you know, um, y- 
you didn't know what you wanted to do. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, as, as and it's well said that the water industry accepts everybody, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, from a diversity standpoint, we're finding, you know, more uh, more females that are getting involved yeah. uh, and so forth. And they bring a lot to the table. Yeah. They really do from a perspective. And it's, uh, um, I mean, years ago when I got in the industry, it was, you know, it was, Primarily a male-dominated yeah, industry. That's what I've heard. Yes, and it's 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 totally changed, and that's you know the whole premise of this podcast yeah. is basically to get young students uh, involved in making them aware of the fact that there are careers out there, and they did not necessarily have to have a college degree exactly. when they start out with exactly like you that's know. something. You call this is how I think about higher education. It will be there. Yeah, um, it doesn't make sense. Unfortunately, it's the same to use the same phrase, but to throw good money after bad. If you're not ready to go to college, correct. You don't have to. Yeah. Um, and this is something I wish was talked about more, that there's technical school, there's jobs, there's sure. co community college, there's so many other alternatives to going straight into a four-year degree if you're not ready for it. Right. Um, and I, even if you are and you just want to take a, to like figure out what you want to do in school. Right. Working is a great option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Figure out what you want to do, you know, as far as that goes. And, again, the, the, the opportunities within the industry umbrella itself are, are – you know, are endless uh, yeah. and so forth. You're you're more or less on the on the consulting side uh, yeah. and so forth, but their operational side, Absolutely. Um, you know, and you, you've got HR, you've got uh, uh, you know, customer service exactly. reps, you've got meter readers and so exactly. forth. So, well, one of the things that um we uh, that I've been hearing time and time again, especially in ASDA's uh, Lead Service Line Inventory Symposium, is um, a lot of regulators or or, or p management people who manage the utilities are finding that they don't have the labor to comply with LCR, right? to comply with the lead and copper rule. With, um, they don't have the people who know how to uh, digitize or who know how to like move from an analog, a set of analog drawings. records and yep. drawings yep. to something digitized and standardized. Yeah. And while well, that's good business for us, um, because we can do that work and take, it, uh, take a lot of that, that labor bandwidth issue off of people's hands, in the long run, it's not great for municipalities that or utilities who don't have newer labor coming in to help right. manage like bigger projects and um, asset management work. Well, a lot of small, you know, water utilities themselves. I mean, obviously, you've got the big three in Connecticut, which mm -hmm. is your Connecticut Water, Aquarion, mm -hmm. and Regionals, and, yeah. and so forth. But, you know, I come from a small municipality. Okay, mm -hmm. we only have 2,300 customers. Mm. We don't have the depth and the resources, exactly. okay, to say, okay, uh, you know, uh, we don't have a designated GIS person, yeah, or we yeah. don't have an, an, a designated environmentalist, Absolutely. or, or, or yeah. whatever. So, you know, but it's something that, uh, again, through through the industry, um, you, you need these things. Exactly. You know, as far as that goes. So, uh, yeah. phenomenal. Um, so, wh what's your favorite memory in, 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 in your... In your the two months I've been working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so real talk. Um, one of the most, the most interesting aspect of my job, um, yes, I work for a startup, so it's, it's really chaotic in a good way, and I do a lot of different things, and I wear a lot of different hats. But in all earnesty, I learn so much every day. Yes. Um, not just, I mean, yes about water, yes about utilities, yes about how startups operate. Yes. Um, but also just recognizing that the amount of effort that um, my team t puts into building relationships, learning from the lived experiences of people who work in m municipal or in utilities, whether municipal owned or investor owned, um, it really pays off. Because yeah. you, it all builds on each other. Sure. And um, I personally have very strong feelings about water service as somebody who consumes water. Yes. And to be able to understand the other, uh, the, the operational side is really invaluable. Oh, God, yes. You know, and the thing is with, you know, as, especially from, you know, customer relations and what I teach in my class, uh, you know, I, I cannot stress um, the, the value of networking. Yeah. Okay, because you never know. Okay, me meeting you, you meeting me, and so forth. That uh, hey, I know Sheila. Sheila is from, uh, you know, you can help me with less service lines. Yeah, you know, so so that that's the type of thing. The other thing that you interesting uh, talk talk a little bit about startups, okay? Because yeah. there are a lot of high school seniors that are out there that have, I, I would say, dreams or, uh, yeah. or, or aspirations. Uh, so tell us a little bit how how your company kind of. Uh, 
uh, evolved. Yes, yes. So um, I will actually want to quickly take a step back and compare and contrast working in a large corporation yeah. versus a startup. Okay. Because I think that um, there are parallels to working for a large water corp uh, system versus a smaller water system sure. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if when you work for a large corporation or a large water system, um, a lot of the administrative side and a lot of the the system uh, the processes inside of the organization are already set. Um, you're able to um, kind of just drop in, do your job, um, maybe like expand and, and learn a little bit outside of what you're doing, and then right. you go home. Uh -huh. Startup is you. Th there may not be processes. Right. There <laughs> may not be a set way of doing things, and you are given the freedom to innovate in real time. Okay. You're able to wear, like I said, wear a lot of different hats. So let's say um, you're new to water or you're new to a company and you're not really sure how your prescribed role will play out in the grand scheme of things. It's okay because you're going to be doing a lot of different things anyways as your role is more solidified. Uh -huh. So there are two very different ways of working, two very different ways of interacting with your coworkers. Um, I... Uh, I enjoy both. I just really like being on a small team sure. and being able to get to know everybody uh, personally. So um, the company was formed, like I said, in 2019, but had been doing uh, pro bono work with the algorithm since 2016. Uh -huh. um, no, 2017, sorry. Uh, and it has been, uh, we do both nonprofit and for-profit work. Um, I think this might be interesting to you, Dave. Maybe your listeners probably won't think this is interesting, but... Um, on our charitable side, we actually are developing a f um, uh, inventory, free inventory software okay. for, we're targeting um, smaller municipalities or municipalities that may not have the funding for our full service, but it makes sure, it ensures that everyone is able to comply with the inventory part of the LCRR. Okay. Um, and so we get to do that because we get to rec we receive grant funding sure. from huge corp organizations like Google.org. Okay. And um, other organizations that we're still writing grants for, so I can't say who they are yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to help fund this really important, meaningful utilities work. Yes. But on the for-profit side, we get to work with larger organizations that have the, bu the budget to invest in um, getting the data digitized and moving to predictive modeling, so at the parcel level. Okay. So um, those organizations can do their asset management planning mm -hmm. much more quickly and okay. not have to wait till. September 2024 <laughs> to finish uh, oh everything. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that's uh, a month before the deadline for the new lead and copper rule revisions for those who are not familiar. Sure, and, and obviously GIS plays a, an Big important role. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we, uh, yeah, the, the technology is designed to be as integrative as possible. Yeah. We are not trying to um, become a new Esri or become a new GIS. We are right. trying to make it as easy as possible for yeah. all utilities to get their their inventory done don't don't reinvent the wheel absolutely not you know, well, <laughs> and, and for all the listeners out there gis is geographic information systems okay and uh you know i i have had one of my students that that graduated and and uh, uh we had uh, and he was unsure what he wanted yeah. to do uh, and so forth thought and uh he ended up graduating from yukon okay. with, his, uh, with his degree in geodesy okay okay and is now working for uh worked for me for a while now he's with the uh, uh, lower Connecticut River cog okay, oh wow as a GIS analyst yeah uh, as far as that goes but and, and what he always used to say a picture is worth a thousand words <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway but uh, you know the the nice thing too and uh, I've been in, in in the business now just south of 50 years wow. okay uh, I'm still on probation <laughs> and uh, but you know the, there is so much more, uh, you know, from a, from a gender standpoint, uh, there is so much more gender diversity. Yeah. Uh, pr predominantly, when I got in, it was a male-oriented yeah. field. Yeah. Now look at you know, <laughs> we're in the field. I mean, there's the, yeah. the tent has gotten much so, so much bigger. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing about water. Everybody drinks water, so why doesn't water look like everyone? Yeah. 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 Exactly. And it's basically if uh, this is an opportunity for people who may not think that this is a field for you to just say. Ah, let's just jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. And uh, literally, you can jump in at any level. Exactly. You know, you can get in the uh, you know the kiddie pool, or you can jump in at the you know off the diving board as exactly. far as that goes. And it depends what your appetite is, and you know what your interests are, and uh, as far as that goes. But I think uh, 
you know, the, the big thing is is that yeah, it, it, it's a field that is uh, open to all. Uh, it is a, a very secure field, and it's a field like many other fields, okay, is uh, experiencing uh, a, a huge amount of retirements, yeah. Yeah. okay? And, we and you know, it's the whole thing. we got to start refilling the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that water stays high quality. You can't just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know where it comes from. You know the, the, the need and so forth, what you want to do. So, yeah. But that's good. And uh, anyway, but that's great. Uh, so Sheila, thank. Uh, so uh, I ask her, what's your favorite food? It's a really difficult question. I really enjoy trying a lot of different foods. So, if you can only eat one food for the rest of your life, what, what oh, this is gonna be such a basic answer. Pizza, obviously. Hey, you know why not? Yeah. Okay. Has all your main food groups. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Add them as you need them. Exactly. <laughs> as, far, <laughs> as far as that goes. What, what, what do you do for hobbies? Uh, so I run the country's only Asian American book club. Really? Yeah, it's called Unerates Book Club. Um, so I read a lot because uh, I got to you know sort through all the books that are coming out and, and pick yep. them for the next year. Um, so I do that. I uh, cross-stitch. Um, I go on walks and I hang out with my husband. It's a very pleasant Nice. Key life. Y you live in Connecticut? I do not, actually. I live in Michigan. You live in Michigan? Yeah. And you came here to, I the, did. to the nutmeg state? I did. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now Michigan, well, obviously Flint. Exactly, you know, yeah. Hello. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, so uh, w what, what are the similarities or, or differences between here and Michigan? Well, huge difference is size. Uh, Connecticut has the benefit of being a smaller state. Yeah. Everybody knows each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily the same in Michigan. There's okay. a lot of discrete players between regions and then um, eventually at the state level. But um, like I think the similarities is you have leaders in government and on the, on the utility side who are really trying to figure out what are best practices to ensure that every type of municipal or every type of utility uh, can comply with LCRR and yeah. get the lead out. Nice. Yeah. Well said. Well Thank said. <laughs> yeah, from there. Okay. Uh, any children? No. 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 Okay. So that's good. More, more time to ride the bike. More time <laughs> to read books. As far <laughs> as far as that goes. Okay. Um, uh, music likes. What, what, what's? Uh, this is not a popular answer. I don't listen to a lot of music. Okay. Yeah. Um, my my husband has a much more eclectic taste in music than I do, but. I just let him turn on his YouTube music, and I'm happy to just listen to whatever. There you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> all right. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Sheila, thank you so much thank for stepping in and, and, and doing a of podcast. Course. And, uh, again, to, for the uh, younger listeners out there, is just to, to give you an idea of some of the diversity of uh, the various uh, array of careers um, that – uh, are in the tent of the the water and wastewater industry. So, Sheila, thank you. Have a safe travel back to Michigan. Thank you, And Dave. thank you so much. And thank you for hosting. This is great. Oh, uh, this is great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our, I think this is going to be our episode eight here, Sheila. My God. Uh, uh, careers uh, that you didn't know out in the water industry, the future of the water and wastewater of the industry and the people that run it. So I'm your host, Dave Kosminski. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much and enjoy.